I didn't just sit down and write. I had to figure out, okay, how do I dig deeper? Why do I want, what, what do I want to say? And no one can tell me that. You got to figure it out yourself, right? I think you've said that good writing demands honesty and a large degree of emotional involvement. Yeah, I certainly believe it. Um, I think it's the most difficult part of the equation. Um, there's certain concepts like honesty or freedom, you know, that I know what it is, but I can't define, like, what is honesty? Um, I feel like you know when you're being honest, and that's why intuition is such an important part of it. You, only you can know that. You can, and you, you got to be honest, first of all, with yourself. Uh, and that's why I question the notion of idea so much, which is, I had a great idea. Is it honest? Um, does it resonate? Does it tingle? You know? Um, no. Then let it go. I mean, of course, you, you know, it's, if you can have a lot of ideas, that's great. We all do, but it's just, is this the story I want to tell? Is this um, what I want to talk about right now? And I'm talking strictly from if you have a choice, right? I mean, again, if you're, if you're hired, you got to find your honesty within that material because it's first and foremost a job, right? You're an artist, but you're getting paid to do something. So if you have a writer, got to write a procedural, well, find your honesty um, and make it work without, within that frame. But if you're writing your own story, um, we're, we're all constantly changing, uh, right? And we're not the same person we were two or five years ago. So what you are going to be interested in now or what resonates is not going to be the same thing. And that's the problem sometimes with rewrites, which is you wrote the script at a certain point in your life and then maybe you have to rewrite, to rewrite it two years later and you're in a different point in your life. So it's really hard because you have to reconnect with that emotional you know, state and maybe you, know, maybe you wrote that script when you were getting a divorce and you were heartbroken and it was so raw and so real. And now two years later, you've gotten over your divorce and you're perfectly content by yourself. And you're like, oh my God, I got to go through that again. You know, <laughs> and, and it is part of the challenge. I mean, you get through it through craft, I guess. Or you go to the memory bank of emotions. But because um, it's not like, I mean, it's not like you have to be in a constant state of emotional turmoil, right? Actually, that's the worst thing to write. But you, you must have gone through the experience to know that it's real and that you know what it feels like. Um, so if, I, if you ask me to des describe what honesty is, I don't really know, but I know when I'm being honest. And it, it takes courage and it takes, you know, and it's exhausting. You got to tell yourself, this is not truthful. When I'm writing, it's good writing. Yeah, sure, I'm a good writer. But this is not the story I, I got to tell. Um, or I can do better than this. Or I got to dig deeper. Uh, right now, this morning, I was working on rewriting something. Um, and I, I wrote a, a pretty decent first draft, I'd say. And I sent it to the right people, the people I trust. And they gave me great feedback. Great. Um, very, very profound. And they said, you got to be careful because you did a good job, but <clears throat> this is a bit superficial. You got to dig deeper. If you don't want this to be um, a bit lame, you got to dig deeper. And this is not what the story is about. Like your story is not what, you th what you're saying it's about. It's not really about that. So my honesty there is to say they're absolutely right. And I had a vague feeling about it, and they're telling me that, and I got to listen to it. Um, so the, the challenging thing is, so this morning, you know, I didn't just sit down and write. I had to figure out, okay, how do I dig deeper? Why do I want, what, what do I want to say? And no one can tell me that. You got to figure it out yourself, right? You can ask friends, but they're not going to have the answer because only you know your material. So, you know, I've been trying, uh, meditating. Um, and I'm new at it, so I don't really know how to do it. But it's just like, you know, closing your eyes, taking deep breaths and trying to go deeper within and see if something comes out of that. Uh, like, what do I actually want to say through this? 
Uh, and it's that process of you know being patient with yourself, but also don't get don't get distracted. You know, be patient, but don't do like ten minutes and move on to something else because it's very easy. Oh, I have to answer some emails. You know, no, 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 no. Don't get distracted. Take the time. Figure it out. Um, so I don't. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know what the answer is. I know that you you get a first and foremost be honest with yourself. And you went to people for feedback who didn't totally just gush over it. They they but then they didn't rip you apart. So they gave you. This is great, but I need you to go deeper. There's more to this. Yeah. This is just skimming the surface. Their feedback. Uh, confirmed that they were the right people to give it to and they identified the problems that I suspected myself without me having to say it. Um, and they gave me the right amount of validation and said, you know, it's not that uh, far away. You're not, you know, it's closer than you think. But <clears throat> this is one of the best feedback I got actually was you're missing a part of the equation. Um, so this 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 guy and I wanted to, I wanted to be the producer. He said, um, "Well, I don't know how to explain it without. Exp well, I'm not going to reveal the whole story because sure, it doesn't sure, matter. No, okay. What I'm saying is, there's an object that produces an emotion in someone, right? And she's trying to understand why she's reacting the way she is to the object. And this guy said, "It's not about the object. You're making it about the object. And the answer is that." There's something happening in her life before the object comes into it, and she's not aware of it. She thinks her marriage is perfect. She thinks her professional life is perfect. And what the object does is reveal that it's actually not as great as she thought. So the object itself doesn't mean that much. Yeah, sure, you, you can explore what it is, but it put, you know, it it causes if, if her life is like a pond, it, it's the stone that causes the ripple effect. So I'm like, mind blown. Yes, yes, good point. It's missing emotional impact because I haven't done that part of the work. So it's yeah. an object that reveals an unraveling. I was making it about the object itself. And that's too cerebral, you know. It's like, no. You can then figure out why the object has that effect on her. But it's not about that. It's about herself and how little she actually knows herself and how that the whole thing unravels and she realizes, wait a second, do I actually love my husband? I thought I did. Does he actually know me? Do I know myself? My job, I thought it was so stable and, you know, uh, and this woman, who is this woman, my mentor? You know, which is an interesting th script to write, but I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, it's not as easy as... Yeah, they want to win the tournament. Can they make it? Can they get to the finals? You know, that's another story. That's a progression. Here, the progression is not as clear. I mean, you got to figure out, okay, it starts off with the object. It ends with her discovering herself. I got to fill out the rest, you know? What's the journey? Um, and there is no clear-cut answer. I mean, only each person has their own way to answer that. Um, see, but that, that's talking about challenges. That's a challenge. This script is driving me crazy. I mean, why did I put myself in this position? Well, I guess because I, um, I don't know. It's what I have to write right now. And that's what you were talking about maybe earlier is just getting lost in the story and all great writers will go through that maybe just because yeah. it's not going to be clear cut. Um, well, this is the thing. Um, sometimes you come up with an idea and um, I don't know how commercial what I'm writing this thing is, but uh, this is one of those scripts I'm writing for myself um, because it's almost the end of the year and I can. I mean, I've, you know, while I'm waiting for a contract to come through, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to write this now. Um, if you want to be more commercial, of course, you can't be that. Um, you know, you got to be more grounded, I guess. Um, so you can find references, and I, you know, I always tell my students, um, steal, steal not in terms of content, steal in terms of structure, right? Find comps, find movies that are similar to yours, and break down the structure, not the not what we're actually seeing. I'm not saying steal characters, steal dialogue. No, that's awful. What I'm saying is, 
If, is your movie similar to Wes Anderson's style? Then go check out the Royal Tenenbaums and see, okay, okay, scene one, character A says this thing to character B, scene two. So the structure, how, how does it evolve? And then you can fill out that structure with your own ideas. And this is, this is the history of art, right? Because you're not really stealing because it will never resemble that work because by stealing it, it's becoming yours. And I mean, the whole history of filmmaking and, and, and storytelling works that way, right? Shakespeare was stealing from the Greeks. It's fine because you're not stealing the essence, you're stealing the structure. Um, so I do that all the time. I look for comps. I study the structure, um, especially if they're great. I'll see what they do, even the subplots. I'm like, look, they have this subplot. Interesting. Was it necessary? I don't know, but it's great. It adds flavor to it. Um, yeah. What do I need? What, what, don't, what don't I need? What can I get rid of? What was the structure of Nightcrawler? Um, Nightcrawler, for example, it's, it's a very, uh, it doesn't innovate in terms of structure. It's, um, it's a very clear progression. Um, it's about a guy living in the margins of society. Um, he's not even a part of society and he's, there's something off about him. So it's how he takes advantage of a, a crooked system to escalate in it until, you know, exploiting uh, the flaws in it. It's interesting because he has no arc. So in terms of structure, it's actually, it's, if you, if you check the, it's very easy to recognize the inciting incident, the, you know, the first act break, the midpoint, the low point, it's, it's, it's almost, it's external almost, it's obvious. Because the movie's not about that. The movie's obviously about escalation. What's interesting is that this guy, the hero is an anti-hero and um, he doesn't have an arc. So usually it's desirable for characters to have an arc, to learn something, so to say, to change, to evolve. This guy, since he is um, a sociopath and it's, it's really hard to identify with him, but he's also a victim of the system, he doesn't change. And it's how he ends up winning. So it's a very pessimistic story. It's a movie about how this awful guy finds his niche and exploits it and his people around him and yeah, makes a lot of money and doesn't pay the price for it. Um, but the structure, it's, it's very easy to copy or, 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 learn, or borrow from because it's just the beats keep escalating. What about the Rene Russo character? Does she have an arc? Uh, she has a little bit more of an arc, I think. Um, it's a, a descending arc, you know, in the sense that she doesn't get any better. She actually succumbs to this guy's ambition, like never-ending ambition. Uh, she's a bit more human in that sense. Um, it's it's a weird movie because it's it kind of it kind of feels like a movie with a message and movies with a very strong message, you know it's not very dramatic to have a very strong message, you know like um, movies shouldn't be a vehicle for uh, ex um, exposing an idea. No. Oh, no, I mean, again, I, I don't mean to say how things should be. It's just that you don't want to be didactic. You know, you don't. I I don't like movies that tell me what how to feel or think. Um, I like movies that contradict me or you know, make me question my own beliefs. And Nightcrawler, in a, in a weird way, gets away with that. I don't feel like they're lecturing me, but it's about like, look how awful the society is, right? Like, look how obsessed uh, and addicted we are to the news cycle that even this guy producing news is well received. Sure. Um, I don't know, look, I'm, I'm, I might be wrong about this because I'm thinking about network, speaking of that, back and, and, and back in the day, 1976, I think. And network has a very strong message and I love it. So I guess it's all a matter of how you do it.